you know, I think that's one of the benefits is because when you think of like kids blowing up doing this shit, you actually think of kids like niggas under 20 years old and stuff. And I come into this, you know, 28. Mm-hmm. So I have some type of life experience. I have my own income already. So I'm not like fucking fiending for money. So I'm in a position of bargaining, you know, mm-hmm. to where I can be like, eh, it's kind of shit. So I think I'll pass. Like, I'm not going to just hop at the first fucking, you know, thing that comes on my way. Mm-hmm. But you never know. I might. We'll see. <laughs> no, man. You, Dude, tra- you traded is- your GameCube for two Chipotle <laughs> burritos, so you never know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, listen, that, listen. That, that, that could be a uh, reach out to Chipotle. <laughs> listen, they want to sponsor Chris. Sitting on the wall. Just <laughs> listen, listen, listen. With the power of hindsight, boys, I do not regret my decision. I stand behind it. Those burritos were fantastic. Do you even get to pick what win him? Fuck yeah, dog. He didn't order it for me. <laughs> I was going to say. He just handed me like $15 and I went and bought two burritos. I couldn't get a drink, but I got the burritos. Okay, okay. as it says, like, did he get you just the burritos or did he give you like a gift card? Nah, he gave me like $15. Damn, you didn't even get a drink. So, uh, okay, so pretty much what you're saying is it literally wasn't two burritos. It was just 15 bucks, which is what you sold it for. Well, I did the math with, like in my phone with the calculator. I was like, all right, I'm going to need... Sixteen dollars and twenty seven cents. You're like, but if I get extra chicken on one, <laughs> just do extra rice on the other. <laughs> Welcome to the Death Taco Podcast. I'm your host, Chris. Today I'm joined by Josh and Francisco, and we're here today to talk about the two thousand and six horror film Stay Alive, directed by William Brent Bell. This dude made some movies called The Devil Inside, The Boy, and The Boy Two. You guys familiar with those? I think I've heard of The Devil Inside. That's about it. I want to see The Boy. I That's one of the did. movies that I have on the list I keep uh, proposing to you guys. I want to see them. We haven't seen it yet. I'm not sure if I could say, like, I feel like I see this movie in those. I don't think I've ever seen The Devil Inside, but I've heard of the ending. And from my understanding, <laughs> the ending's dog shit. I think you told me about that. Denise is eating tortillas and eggs in the corner, nodding her head at me. <laughs> but, so anyways, like, what do you guys, you guys, we're all about the same age, right? Give or take a year. Hmm. You guys are a little bit older than me, I believe. But, so in 2006, I would have been about 14, you guys were 15. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. So you guys remember when it came out, though? Yeah. Somewhat. Uh- I, I've seen like bits and pieces of it, like on TV, but that's. that's oh, so it. you never seen this? Yeah, I've never heard of it. Never seen it until today. Holy shit! I was positive everybody had heard of this because when this came out, dog, like I felt like the gimmick was fucking incredible. You yeah, yeah. Play exactly. the video game, you die in real life. So to give like a quick synopsis of the movie, right? Uh, there's some game obsessed kids who get their hands on a beta version of some horror video game. And as they realize they're playing it, the events that take place in the game happen in real life. And the kids kind of have to figure out the mystery of how to stop this paranormal game. Is that a fair way to sum it up? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so you've never seen this? Nope. You did? Bits and pieces. How did you... Do you remember how you saw it? No. I think I was just, like, scrolling through channels on TV, and I seen it. You just saw it on cable? Yeah. I, like, stopped. I seen Frankie Muniz. I was like, hey, that's Malcolm in the Middle. And right. I just, like, stopped watching. Bro, that's all I remembered about this movie. Is like, that's the one with uh, fucking Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah. I remember I saw this in the movie, at the movies, and I thought it was decent. At the time, as a kid, I remember I was like, oh, this is, this is kind of dope. I like this. So, like, I'm trying to understand, like, because the engine for this game, right? You guys watched the movie, correct? Yes. The, 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 <laughs> <laughs> that was a really fucking stupid question <laughs> but so like i looked into the history of this fucking the movie right i had to do a fucking a little bit of a deep dive and i guess this came out around the same time as grand theft auto san andreas those are what the graphics of this should have been like i feel like in some ways the graphics in the movie are better than san andreas. <laughs> right I don't know, I was confused by, like, the, uh... Because I didn't play video games a lot at that time. Like, at that time, I was playing NBA 2K and fucking Madden. And strictly, pretty much that's strictly it. So, like, 
my understanding of like what the technology was at that time for these games do you guys can you guys reference that like at all like as far as like the speaking part not even the speaking part just so much like the graphics the controls like was there anything actually out like that at the time or is this like a pretty much fabricated thing i don't know um depends what what year did doom come out so it kind of looks like Doom esque. Uh, I think it's like Doom 3D. On this one, I'd probably be the wrong person. Like I said, because of 2006, I was still just Mario games. So for me, it was like more cartoon like games of so Mario, Zelda, Metro Prime, all that. All the fun loving games. All the fun loving games. Uh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I looked it up. Doom looked fucking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> So it was probably just some out of the world graphics, and I'd, I'd imagine they didn't, because that was. You think like they completely pulled like the fucking rules for the game out of their ass, like in terms of what it looked like? I think so, because I, because 2006 would have been like when we're all freshmen, and I'm trying to think of what I was playing freshman year. When did like the Resident Evil 4 came out? Because remember the the difference between Resident Evil 3 and Resident Evil 4 is fucking insanely different. Actually, no, hey, actually, yeah, that, yeah. So Halo 3 came out a year later, and Halo 3 had really good graphics. So it could be it could be realistic. Oh, because I remember when Chris was playing Resident Evil. Resident was, Evil 4 came games. out in 2005 for the GameCube. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so that makes sense. So this, was would you say the graphics are similar to that? Yeah. Sure. To Resident Evil game, yeah. Okay, so it's not completely out of the realm of possibility. Nah, especially but, on PC. I never played online games until fucking Fortnite, guys. I was really late to the fucking party. That's like two <laughs> years ago. So my understanding of how online gaming works, because they're all, in this movie, they're all wearing like fucking old school computer headsets. They got really vague controllers because they didn't get fucking money for anybody to actually... Or did you recognize the controllers they played with? They had a PlayStation controller. Did they? Yeah, Frankie Muniz was playing with the PlayStation 1, and I think I've seen an Xbox controller in there somewhere. Hmm. I wasn't even paying attention to that, so... So they were kind of all over the place? Yeah, but they all had, like, Alienware laptops and shit. Hmm. What the fuck does that mean? So, like, at that time, Alienware was, like, the top of the top for, like... I don't want to say PC products, but at least, like, laptops, like gaming laptops and shit. Mm Mm-hmm. I can see that. Even the fucking name, Alienware. Yeah. It's a dope-ass name for a computer. Alienware? That does sound fucking all sci-fi and future and shit. Yeah. They were they were known for, like, their... Uh, I don't know. Francisco, you know computers more than I do. But whatever, like, whatever is good for graphics. Like, they they were known for, like, having really good graphics on their, on their shit. Uh, just their graphic cards and all that? I guess, yeah. It, I mean, back then I didn't know nothing about computers. I just recently started learning about them. But I was more into consoles instead of computer gaming. But I know Alienware right now makes pretty good stuff. But they're not they're not at the top of the game. But uh, back then, anymore. yeah. But back then I can see that happening because it kind of fluctuates between different companies. So yeah. So that's the tech talk portion of the show. <laughs> I got lost halfway through there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just spaced the fuck out. I was like, sure. I trust this source. But no, so the vague idea of this movie is the cursed video game. It's not a completely original idea, being so that there's all kinds of different cursed movie ideas. Whether it be the cursed videotape, the cursed fucking phone call, the cursed fucking... I don't I keep saying fucking. I got to stop. The cursed videotape, the cursed phone call. Uh, you guys think of any other... The cursed book. There's even like a cursed fucking vagina. Mm-hmm. It's a movie called <laughs> It Follows. Check it out. Anyways. Uh, but no, so yeah, the idea is not completely new, but the thought of like the video game aspect. And I remember at the time especially, that was like huge in the marketing. Because even like the poster for the movie, when I'm looking it up, is a picture of like a pair of hands holding a fucking PlayStation controller or something. Yeah. And the mark and the slogan is "You die in the game, you die in real life." It kind of reminds me of like uh, old school like chain emails. Like you know, you click uh, on a link, 
you click on a link, you open up a message, you're scrolling through your page. They're even still around low key in like comment sections on Facebook and stuff. You've started reading this. Now it's too late to turn back. I forgot all about all those. Yeah. If you don't send this to 10 different people, 30 clowns are going to rape you tonight. <laughs> I sent that one. <laughs> Because I was thinking about this really hard. I was like, all right, why was this movie the way it was? And, like, how? why is it this this kind of horror? And what came out at the time? And what came out before it? What came out around it? Like, so, to, for context, the James Wan movies, you know, the Insidious, the Conjuring movies, those came out post-2010. So I was like, okay, that's why it's not, you know, like this extreme over-the-top, like, creepy fucking gothic style of horror it's not that yet but what it is is 2006 i just typed in 2006 horror movies so what came out at that time when a stranger calls the original black christmas the not the original but the re the original remake see no evil with fucking kane bro i fucking remember that movie uh, this one movie called pulse a lot of japanese remakes the grudge movies and stuff those are coming out at that time so I mean that's kind of like to give you an idea and like to understand why this movie was like I think it's more of a jump scare movie correct yeah yeah I guess yeah and it's also PG-13 so a lot of cutaway stuff you know somebody jumps in the face camera cuts we might see the aftermath of some blood and stuff but it's not a real graphic movie not Nah, I think there was only one scene that was pretty graphical, and that's it. So anyways, guys, we're going to go ahead and start to break down this movie. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you checking it out and then coming back to this point. Uh, but if not, this is Stay Alive. So the movie starts out with the video game, right? Like an intro to the game. And we didn't talk about the soundtrack. The soundtrack of the game is actually pretty fucking dope. Can you guys think of it off the top of your head? I can't. <laughs> it's just like this series of like some type of synth. Just dun, 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 dun. Just repeat it over and over again. A really hard fucking string. And that was actually effective. Like it actually felt like it made like the heart kind of speed up as you hear it. So we start out with that. It's like uh, close in on a cemetery and a mansion, correct? Mm hmm Yes. And that's like the camera panning through... And we see a guy walking around a plantation, this avatar in this game world. I didn't remember any of this shit. I'm trying to think of, like, what type of games to compare to that it looked like. And we kind of landed on Resident Evil 4. That's the one, yeah. And the graphics are actually decent in this game, I felt. They're not bad. For the time it was made, they're not bad. Like, considering, like I said, it came out around the same time as Grand Theft Auto San Andreas was the big reference I seen for it. So this avatar is walking around the crib and it sees a woman in a red dress. That's something I forgot to fucking talk about. Okay, that was a whole thing. I deep dived into this and forgot to talk about it. So the primary antagonist of this movie is a woman named uh, Elizabeth Bathory. Okay, so <clears throat> apparently this movie took like an actual fucking like famous historical serial killer named Elizabeth Bathory. She was a... Uh, a countess in the country of Hungary, I think. And she was born, she was around in like the 1500s, early 1600s. And she was known for actually like killing hundreds of her servants and local like fucking noble women. She would like cut them up, mutilate them, use their blood, rub it all over herself to keep her youth. So this was like an actual person. And this character has been referenced in a lot of horror films. Well, not a lot. I just know two. Maybe three. Uh, American Horror Story. The, there's a character in there. Uh, in the witch's story, the Marie Laveau, I believe. Remember, she kills her servants, uses their blood on her skin. In, uh, in one of the Hostel movies, Hostel 2, there's a woman who like strings some chick up in a, a swimming pool. And she's like under her with a fucking scythe and cuts her open and just like lets the blood all fall on top of her. Uh, I think those are the references I can think of off the top of my head, but that's where this comes from, which is crazy to me. I, I have no 
I can't think of names off the top of my head, but I know a lot of movies that reference that. They reference the using the blood of the youth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And apparently, like, also this woman was, like, hungry is close to Transylvania, so that might be, like, where the whole Dracula story comes from. I would have never guessed that watching this fucking movie. Yeah, me neither. But fucking, so... I didn't... Like, what did you think of the design of the old woman? Because they show her in this part. Kind of corny. Well... Like I said, right now, seeing it, I just probably wasn't as effective compared to as back then. Cause like I feel I, it didn't age well. Yeah, yeah. no. Uh-uh. Like I said, back then, I could definitely see, it's like, oh, shit. You know, it looks real. She probably looks real creepy and all that. But, like, seeing it today, like I said, my first time seeing them, just like. Because I looked it up, and I tried to see, like, if this came out around, what came out around it. The Saw movies came out in the early 2000s, 2003. So did Hostel. So that, like, imagery is out there being, like, over-the-top, you know, gory and stuff. But this movie didn't really do that too much. You think because they went the video game aspect, they wanted, like, young kids who played video games to be able to watch it, and that's why it was PG-13? Yeah, probably. Makes Could sense to me. Nah, but yeah, so so this movie's starting out with this dude walking around this plantation, and I can't remember what sets it off. I really struggled watching this. I felt like I had to like rewind and play back a lot to like write down what was happening. All I got here is that he's walking around. He sees an old woman in a red dress in the mansion. And then kids start crawling on the walls and chasing him. He sees like little little demon children. Yeah, those cool. are the... I think they're all supposed to be exclusively little girls, right? Yeah, yeah. she would... She would uh, like hunt down young women and kill them and shit like that. So she could, like, summon these ghosts, ghouls, zombies, demons, the undead. That's a reference from a movie. Uh, but so they all look like they're all wearing outfits from The Ring, correct? Yeah. They all look like little mini versions of The Ring Girl. Mm-hmm. So they chase him, and I think he ends up going up some stairs, and he opens up, like, some double doors, and he sees, like, a torture chamber with bodies all over it, correct? Mm-hmm. And then as soon as he sees it, he backs up and he falls off the balcony and a little chain appears around his neck and he's hanging. And then is there a game over screen or is it just like go to the guy's face? Uh, no, it just says game over. Yeah, It says game over. And we see a guy with the glasses playing this game. And he looks obviously disturbed. So this dude with the glasses, we find out his name is Loomis. So Loomis calls up his boy, uh, Hutch, and he's trying to get him to pull up. He's doing anything he can to get this guy to come over. And he's like, hey, come play this. Is that what he's trying to sell to him? I can't remember. Yeah, no, yeah, he started telling him that, I think he was telling him that he had a beta, this and this, and that he wanted him to play it. He's like, you want to play this? Watch some VHS tapes? I don't know what they did in 2006. <laughs> What did you do in 2006? <laughs> <laughs> I fucking beat off and ate nachos. Oh, that's what they were trying to do, man. I feel it. Can I just say this? Did, did, did you recognize him? The guy in the beginning of the movie? Have mm. you ever seen him in anything else? I didn't pay attention. No? Who was you he? You know who that was? No. Have you guys ever seen Heroes? Yeah. That was him? There's like 30 characters <laughs> yeah, in Heroes, bro. Know, but that's vague um... shit. <laughs> <laughs> you made it sound like if he was fucking some like... Brad Pitt or some shit, yeah, dog. Like we should have known. Like you guys like, don't know, kn- bro. You should <laughs> let like, me you, tell you. <laughs> you, you dumb <laughs> bastards. <laughs> yeah. Now let me struggle to remember this character. <laughs> uh, it's, no, it's because uh, I just remember fucking heroes being a fucking dope ass show. That's it. I was like, oh shit. I was like, when I first seen him, I was like, oh. All right. So on a different subject, <laughs> the one thing I do give this movie credit for is I did remember the names pretty easily of all the characters. Or did yeah. you guys struggle? No, I remembered them because they were like weird or odd to me. Loomis, yeah, they were, they were nicknames, right? Yeah, never heard of Loomis. Swink. Swink. October. Hutch. Hutch. No, nah, I've heard of Hutch. But... I've never heard Hutch. All I remember is October. Anyways. <laughs> That's all I remember. So this guy Loomis, he just played this game. He just died. And he's creeped out. So did you guys ever play scary games for real? Played a little bit of Doom. That was about it. 
a little bit of Resident Evil. Mario. Mario. <laughs> it's pretty scary, dude. I used to watch my dad play all kinds of fucked up shit. He used to play Resident Evil 1 through 3. He'd play Parasite Eve. He dabbled in Silent Hill, Dead Space. Parasite Eve. Wow. Bro, I have Parasite Eve. It's on this fucking bookshelf. Do you really? Yeah, I played it a little bit. The second one, I never played the first one. Hmm. But anyway, so I could see that because specifically Dead Space, bro. Dead Space, I completely bitched out of that fucking game. Like, I started it, I played about 30 minutes of it, and I was like, we're going to nope the fuck right out of here. (laughs) Yeah, I started Doom and let my cousin take over. Mm -hmm. Like, here you go, man. It's different, right? Playing a a video game than watching a movie because you're actually, like, fucking doing something. Yeah. You're not just watching it. You're actively, like, (laughs) in the shit. Yeah, you're pretty... So, (laughs) thing is, like, about two, three days ago, I actually was playing a scary game, um... On stream, fucking, I was playing Blair Witch. There's a Blair Witch game. Mm-hmm. Tight. It's actually, it's actually pretty cool. Like, it's not necessarily scary and all that, but kind of like what you're saying is like you're just so focused onto it or into it, and you got to do like certain tasks and all that. Like when something else happens, it just it throws you off guard. You're like, oh shit. Mm-hmm. Especially if you have headphones too. It just. It's a different type of immersion, definitely. Because when you're watching it, you know, you can kind of turn your head and be like, all right, I don't, maybe, I can kind of watch this out of the corner of my eye. But you're playing a game, you're fucking in there. And you actually, like you said, have to do tasks, and you just forget that, like, oh, this isn't real. Mm -hmm. And clearly Josh stood away from that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, no. I'd watch from behind the couch, shit like that. I don't blame you, dude. Like I said, I'm not good with scary games either. But so, this guy, he calls his boy Hutch. He tries to get him to come over. Hutch is like, nah, man, it's late. I'm good. I don't feel like playing fucking video games with you. He says, I'll make it next week. So this dude, Loomis, he takes it upon himself. He leaves his bedroom. He goes around the house, and he just kicks open his roommate's door. Doesn't knock. And his roommate's wearing a mask, right? (laughs) Was he wearing a mask? Fucking pig pig mask. mask. He's wearing a pig mask and smashing out some chick. And my boy Loomis walks like five steps into the room and he stands there. He doesn't crack it and go, oh, my bad. He just walks in and he's just like... Staying in there. What's going on, guys? (laughs) I can't even remember what his boy says. His boy doesn't even react all that like crazy. But so I got here, he stood there in an uncomfortable amount of time. Is he trying to get them to hang out, probably, because he's scared? More than likely. Fucking, I can't remember, though. So, dude walks out of the room, and uh, I guess he tries to go to sleep, and he has a nightmare about the video game. So, he wakes up, tries to turn on his, like, room light, and he notices the power's out. So, he goes downstairs to his kitchen, and he gets himself a nice little glass of milk. Everybody likes warm milk, because the power's out. Yeah, especially when the power's out. So I didn't, I didn't understand that. What do you mean? The power's out and I wake up. I just go back to sleep. I don't give a shit if I'm like thirsty, hungry, whatever. I'm not getting out of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get up until the lights are back on. Yeah. That is true, right? Because like, well, what else is there to do? The power's out. Fuck yeah. it. I'm not going to open my fridge because I'm letting the cold air out. Mm-hmm. Just seemed dumb. So when he's down in the kitchen, we kind of start to see, like, figures that he's not seeing, correct? Oh, okay, so he hears a buzzing noise first. And the buzzing noise is supposed to be the sound of the game controller, right? Yeah. Yeah, controller vibrating. Like a controller vibrating on a table. And uh, he ignores the sound, and he keeps walking around. And then he hears the sound again. And this time, he sees a shadow. And I'm assuming it's the shadow of this woman, Elizabeth Bathory, correct? Mm Mm-hmm. So once he sees the shadow, he chucks his fucking glass of milk at this lady. It goes through her and hits a wall. So she's not actually there. It's just like the spirit, the essence. Let's go with essence. Essence. So he runs upstairs and he goes straight to his roommate's room, which is a good move. Now that I think about it. You know, there's other people in the house. I got to go to them. That'll be safe. But unfortunately for this dude, he walks into the room, and there's just blood all over the walls. So we're assuming they got fucked up. 
Isn't somebody like a body hanging and shit? Yeah, and the girl was the hanging girl. upside down. Mm-hmm. So then, of course, Loomis starts to back away from the doorway. A chain appears around his neck. He falls off the balcony, and now he's hanging in the middle of his own living room. Or his entryway, whatever you want to call it. And that's more or less the opening scene of this movie. I like the opening scene. It was pretty solid. It wasn't bad. Other, other than getting the milk. <clears throat> it's just something I wouldn't have done. Uh, it was a cool little intro. Like, it gets across the point. Like, all right, he died that way in the game. He died that way in real life. Okay, that makes sense. So, after the title card, we get a camera pan over New York, I'm assuming, correct? Is that where they're at? Uh, I thought it, it was, was some city. Georgia. No shit. Well, that's I, how they got to Georgia the- looks a lot like fucking New York. It was like, I don't know, maybe like Atlanta City or some shit. But, like, that's how they got to the plantation, isn't it? Because the plantation was in Georgia. Ooh. I did not know that. So we get a pan over a vague city that nobody knows the name of. And uh, (laughs) the power of editing. (laughs) No, all right. So we get a pan over a city, and you're pretty sure it's Georgia or Atlanta? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> or was it New Orleans? Oh my God! It's a we get a pan over a vague city. <laughs> Josh is just machine gunning out fucking cities now. Might have been Chicago. Bro, it did look a little bit like Chicago though. I I know for a fact, like it was like a southern city because their graves were above ground. They bury their dead above ground. Because <laughs> it's below sea level. If you bury you just said I know for sure. You know nothing for sure, <laughs> sir. I was ready to just tie the knot and go, you know what? Fuck it. And you got the nerve to be like, maybe it was Louisiana. Or maybe it was New Orleans. Pulling a Francisco here. <laughs> the only thing he knows for certain is it's not New York. Right on. You're right, though. There's a plantation. It's got to be a southern state. Yeah. Okay. So now we're introduced to the character that Loomis was on the phone earlier named Hutch, who's the central protagonist of our story. And he has some type of admin job, just stereotypical. You got those papers, you got them notes. It's pretty much like a child's idea of what a fucking admin job is like, I feel. Yeah. So this guy, Hutch, he goes to his boss's office. And he kind of starts to apologize to his boss, like, ah, oh, man, I'm sorry, I didn't get you the Mendez report. I'm going to get that to you as soon as I can, blah, blah, blah. And the boss looks upset, but he kind of really casually mentions, like, oh, I'm not talking, I'm not upset about the Mendez report. And he starts referencing some fucking video game. I'm trying to beat this guy. I don't know what to do. I've got the lasers. I've got the Gatling gun. I got the lube. I don't know how to get him. And so pretty much, like, this is... This part of the movie is telling us that Hutch is like some type of video game savant, correct? Like, he's that fucking guy with games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I didn't care for this part because I feel like it's one of them things like, uh, you ever seen Grandma's Boy? Yeah. That's like a good example of showing us rather than telling us that you're good at a fucking video game. Correct? Mm-hmm. Like, because I could tell you, we could make a movie and some you guys could gas me up, bro, and I could be the greatest plumber of all time. Like I can, we can have a camera, and Josh could be like, "Man, the way you pull those shits out is incredible." <laughs> I've seen you pull out eight fucking brown snakes, two minutes with your lips. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> Nobody wants to play today. <laughs> oh, we're a serious podcast today. Okay. I didn't care for that scene. And uh nah, but you guys know what I'm saying about it though. Like in you does the metaphor resonate? Mm-hmm. Quit thinking about the metaphor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, so like, was it believable to you that this dude's boss would have that conversation with this guy? No, not really. Have you guys ever had any type of relationship with the boss like that? No. Like a close relationship? Yeah. Mm, 
No. <laughs> like, you have to think about that shit? <laughs> no, I can't think of, like, any time to where... I ah, fuck it. It's a movie. That's why. So, yeah, so his boss is pretty much just gassing him up. Like, oh, he's the coldest fucking dude to video games. You put half as much time as he did into games as he did into your work, you'd be a god. You'd be where I'm at today. And I just think that was kind of, like, lazy storytelling a little bit. Like, they could have done different things to show us that he's the shit at fucking video games. And so at the end of this conversation he has with his boss, we uh, kind of see, or we get a phone call. And he, I think this is supposed to, they insinuate this is where he learns that Loomis is dead. So the next scene is Hutch at the funeral. And he's kind of mingling, and we're kind of getting this view of a blonde chick with a Polaroid camera. Who's just snapping shots in people's faces at a funeral. And we learned that the funeral is for Lewis and his roommates and the girl. So he runs into this blonde chick. And I think she says she's a friend of the female that died, correct? I thought she was a friend of Loomis. She no, because remember, she walks up talking about me and her grew up together. I thought we'd be taking pictures at our at her wedding, not at her funeral. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And she's... Before they even speak, the way she breaks the ice is fucking Hutch is like brooding up against a gravestone and she takes a picture of his face while he's crying. I don't know how I feel about that, gentlemen. Yeah, that's pretty rude. She made a comment saying that uh, all these people here crying and you look the saddest of them all. He didn't look that sad. No, he didn't. Nope. Mm Mm-mm. You guys ever had someone, like, snap a photo of you, like, unwillingly? All the time. All the time? All the time. Didn't I do it to you one time? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> was that my oh, Facebook photo for, like... It was. I'm talking about this bitch being rude, dog. That was my Facebook profile <laughs> oh picture my, for, like, uh, a couple I months. God about that shit. Yep. <laughs> Josh was in it, too, so, I mean, I can't feel that bad. Was I? Yes, yeah, it bro. was all three of us. <laughs> You're an asshole for that, Chris. <laughs> I forgot about that shit, dude. Man, it's all just a perfect circle. But now, so this blonde chick and Hutch, they have words about Loomis. I can't remember off the top of my head the actual conversation. Is it literally just like, I'm sad, you're sad, and then she gives them her number, correct? Mm-hmm. So they can both be sad. <clears throat> That's right. And then uh, Loomis's little sister walks up on Hutch. She gives him, like, a satchel, correct? A man bag? Oh, a man yeah. purse? She gives it to him, he opens it, and it's all Loomis's games and shit his folks are going to throw away, correct? Yeah. And, of course, that's where he sees the Stay Alive game. Mm-hmm. But, like I said, before that, him and this blonde chick, this blonde chick's name is Abigail. It's the only name I didn't remember. It's the only normal name, so, yeah. yeah. So, Abigail gives Hutch her number, obviously, because she wants that dick. I'm pretty sure. If Jesus was here, I feel like that's what he would say. <laughs> she wanted that dick, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a fair assessment? Yeah. Because yes. why else would some chick at a funeral just be like, oh, yeah, take my card, you know, for no fucking reason? All right, so this next scene is kind of confusing to me, right? <clears throat> so they go to, like, a coffee shop that's, like, slash a game hub, correct? Is that mm-hmm. the word for it? Was it? it? I just because there was computers was everywhere. All these kids are just playing games on computers, and it's dimly I lit. Just, I just knew yeah. it was a coffee shop. That's it. And uh, Hutch walks up on some goth chick. We learn her name is October. And this part really confused me because when they introduced Abigail to the story, I'm like, oh, okay, this is Hutch's love interest, obviously. But as soon as he runs into October, this goth chick at the coffee shop, they embrace very strangely. I'm like, oh, Hush already has a girlfriend. Did you guys get those vibes at all? Yeah. Like, cause she like kisses him on the cheek, all kinds of shit, correct? Yeah, and she seemed jealous. Oh, well, that's later on. But I mean, just in this first like meeting, it wasn't friend vibes, it didn't feel. Nah. Nope. If you had to pick between the two, which one are you guys taking? October. I'm taking Abigail, actually. Abigail? Yeah. You just admit to fucking being attracted to a white woman? <laughs> They're both white. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, actually, that looks like the traits. Uh, October yeah. could be a fucking pale Mexican. 
Uh, yeah, I guess. October just definitely finding that Abigail was. That's all I got to say on that one. This is groundbreaking to me, Doug. I've never <laughs> seen you like attracted to a blonde. Yeah, that's true. You even said you prefer brunettes over blondes. Yeah, I do. Well, what's happening? She just looked like, uh, I don't know. She looked more more of the freak between the two. <laughs> Wait, where did what? you get that? Hold up, yeah, hold up, what? It's, we saw know. her for like five <laughs> seconds, bro. I'm talking about through the whole movie. But, uh. She was homeless. She was homeless. I don't know. It's just the way she looked. Don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> I respect his taste. But nah, so like, were you guys at all thrown off about that, though? Like, who was his woman? Did he have a woman? Who was his love interest? Because even throughout the movie, like, it, I still couldn't really tell till the very fucking end. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. Well, when I seen it, I think kind of what you're saying is, like, his love interest was more with uh, Abigail than with October. I mean, it kind of did throw me off a little bit with October in the beginning, but then I started just seeing it a little more. I was like, oh, it's just she's very friendly. She has a crush on him type of thing, and that's it. I don't even think they insinuate she has a crush on him. She doesn't. It's supposed to be like a brother sister like relationship, but I don't feel that. They're they're in the south, so <laughs> <laughs> step brother, step sister. Thank God she didn't like get stuck in any washing machines. <laughs> huh? The fact that you both laugh disgusts me. <laughs> I've just seen the memes. So, also at this time, we're introduced to October's brother, Finn, also known as Phineas, also known as the guy from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And so, you know, he walks in. He's definitely the comedic relief in this movie, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. As soon as he walks into the room, he's like, man, Hutch, he's like, first your parents, now your boy. It's a fucked up life you got, son. <laughs> 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 Those are like his opening lines, old dude, man. Yeah. And he uh, swipes the uh, his satchel off a of hutch, and he starts going through the games. He's like, what type of games do we got? And this is actually where we see the uh, the case for Stay Alive for the first time when he pulls it out. And that's when Hutch tells him, like, oh, uh, Loomis was doing some beta testing. And immediately, we're supposed to assume these are all... Would you say all of them are supposed to be, like, game nerds? Yeah. I still didn't get that impression. I mean, specifically I, I, Hutch and Finn, Finn and Hutch, and then Swink. Of course, they're all supposed to be like diehard fucking gamers, correct? They're hanging out in a fucking cafe for video games, bro. Yeah. Well, yeah. like I said, I didn't. When I saw the cafe, I didn't see it as a gaming cafe. It was just the coffee shop where everybody was playing on computers. I didn't. Yeah, like right? I wasn't paying attention to that. Where everybody's like getting mad at their computer screen and just raging. Watching the movie. I feel like I didn't. <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, <clears throat> I think that's the impression the audience was supposed to have. Is that he like got it? He got fucking he got a boner at the side of this game, correct? Mm-hmm. And he's like, in the honor of Loomis, we're gonna play this game tonight. So the next scene after this coffee shop is uh, Hutch at his apartment or his crib, wherever the hell he's at, and he's washing red beer pong cups. Did you guys catch that? Yeah. And they zo- they zoomed in on the fucking like red plastic cups. <laughs> is this a Josh move, bro? Is this what you do? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I have actual cups. Generally, you've been a bachelor before, living on your own. Did you ever do this? No. I use like shaker bottles and shit. Like even now. Oh, yeah, and also I forgot to mention that at the coffee shop, Hutch mentioned October and Finn that the police think his friend was murdered. So... I don't know how to describe that. Because usually in these type of movies, right, when it's supernaturally involved, bodies go missing sometimes. Either bodies go missing or it looks like a suicide. I feel like it's significant that the police think it was an actual murder. So this ghost that murks people doesn't clean up its fucking mess whatsoever. Hmm. No shame in this game. But, oh, wait, honestly, though, thinking about that, I didn't even, until you actually mentioned it like that, I didn't think about it. Like, somebody hanging like that, I wouldn't take that as a murder. Like, what are the fucking logistics? I think, I don't know, man. I think because the railing was broken, and then, I don't know. Well, yeah, his friends were, like, gutted and hanging from the ceiling and shit, so they didn't all kill Uh, themselves in, like, graphic-ass ways. Yeah. Or or it could have been where 
or I don't know. Murder suicide? Yeah, murder suicide type of thing. But other than that's mm. like just strictly saying that he got murdered. I'm like, if I see somebody hanging, that's gonna be that's not gonna be my first thought. It's the railing for me, man. The railing looks like makes it look like he got like pushed or shoved over. I don't know, man. He could have been dramatic and just jumped through it. Like if I ever took myself out, it'd be something like that. Like I'd put yeah. something on my butt before I hung myself. <laughs> like why did he do it? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Speaking of that, like if you were gonna die, right? I thought of this uh, shamefully. <laughs> if you were ever gonna die, right? And when they're doing the autopsy, they were gonna find like one item in your asshole. What would you guys want that item to be? Hmm. It's pro- obviously it has to fit in your asshole. So let's be realistic here, guys. Well, Francisco can fit more than I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think you're pretty much up there, too. I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> I don't... I honestly have no fucking clue, bro. You can't even throw out a fucking... A spoon? I don't know. <laughs> I just don't understand why there's got to be something in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> am I being... Am I murdered? Or nah, dude, you just died. You're in old age and you died. <laughs> but there was something in your asshole. But there was something in your ass they found during the autopsy. Like, inserted into your ass. That you put up there yourself. You got to put it up there. <laughs> and that's how I died, right? No, you just did it before you died as a joke. You're like, alright. Or joke or something serious. Probably serious. <laughs> <laughs> alright, you guys want me to tell you what I thought of? Yeah. I'd put a treasure map. <laughs> to some fake treasure? Or like to like a treasure? fake treasure. Like, just start like this goose chase that just completely ends with like i don't know you looked up my ass it's it's actually not a bad idea it'd be funny Mm. how big is this treasure map (laughs) it's tiny massive (laughs) i was like when you said treasure map i was thinking about you know like in the cartoons like pirates in (laughs) 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 fully extends open yeah how did we get on this subject? You. you. <laughs> <laughs> he said if... <laughs> How did we get from there to there? I know what I said to start it, but... Because you said when... <laughs> oh, you were talking about suiciding. Okay, that's why. And you said if you took yourself out, you do that with having something up your ass. <laughs> then I was like, oh, that's where that came from. Okay. So you guys never said anything, and I'm uncomfortable about it. So so say something, guys. (laughs) Anything. I got got a question for you right now, actually. What? Why? I'm curious. Why does something always have to end up in your ass? It's like always. This This is like the second time I've brought it up. There's a finger situation. I didn't do that to myself. Okay. (laughs) There's you thinking about how you're gonna die with something up your ass. You said I'm you, starting to think you did do it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Just with my thumb. Instead of my thumb in my mouth, I got this thing where I put a thumb in my ass. Take your thumb out of your mouth. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. When you took it out your ass, though, did it make that little popping sound when you took it out? Just. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. And still, nobody's answered the question. <laughs> I put some money up there. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of money, bro? Some, uh, cash. Like a debit some... card? No. no. Like cash? It seems like that would hurt. Yeah, cash. You I feel like, like the cash would up. tear coming out. Might. What about like a thumb drive? <laughs> thumb drive. <laughs> 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 Stick him with the cash. Put it in a plastic bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm All right. You never said. I'm, I don't know. I'm thinking about it still. Like a flower. No, if anything, I'd have... <laughs> <laughs> Fucking like four I, leaf clover. I would <laughs> not even lie, bro. <laughs> you do a hamster. Oh shit. <laughs> I wouldn't say hamster, but honestly, I think if anything, I probably do a spoon. 
generic ass spoon. Why? I just, I just want them to have like just their imaginations to run about it. You know, like the fuck, what did this dude do, or who did this to him? Let's brainstorm real quick. Why would he have a spoon in his ass? <laughs> hey, or <laughs> it's this lucky spoon. I'm just. <laughs> It could be a reference again, your butthole eating too. Just saying. Just like think about that it. And his ass eating. Or what if he didn't want people, like, what if when he died, he was like, I don't want people to think I'm a vampire, so I got to die with silver on me somewhere. <laughs> 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 That'd be my theory. He wasn't a vampire, guys. <laughs> Wait, isn't silver for wolves? The lore is shaky. Yeah, it's the like lore is very shaky. <clears throat> Well, so anyways, <laughs> he was washing red cups in his sink. All right. And he, so Hutch is washing red fucking plastic cups in his sink, which is strange. And then he hears sounds outside of his apartment door. I couldn't register what the sounds were, but he starts going. He starts walking towards his front door, correct? And then when he looks through the people, we're introduced to Swink, a.k.a. Malcolm in the Middle, a.k.a. Frankie Muniz, a.k.a. I never saw him after this movie. Is that fair to say? Agent Cody Banks. Was this that is before? after that, I think. Yeah, yeah then fair to say. Because he was like in his early 20s, I'm assuming here. Late teens. Yeah. So as soon as he sees Swink, uh, fucking, it's a jump scare when he jumps into the people. And the next shot is uh, Hutch and the rest of his boys all gathered at his apartment to play this video game, correct? Including Abigail, the blonde chick, who I'm assuming has never played video games in her life. She's just randomly like, you know what? Yeah, I'll join this random group of people and play this fucking scary video game. In memory of somebody that she didn't really know? Correct. Right. Hey, anything for that D, right? Swink puts on like a, a single glove to pl uh, play the game, and the dude Finn kind of gives him shit about it. So they're kind of doing this like Laurel and Hardy roll of like we're just... All right, really, everybody does it. Everybody just shits all over Swink during this movie. Do you notice that? Mm -hmm. I wonder why. Just because he's small? That's, again, a reference to the movie we're talking about. You realize yeah, he put yeah. on a glove, right? Mm -mm. That was like... This is going to speak to, like... Like, we're making fun of it, but it's speaking to the character development in this movie and how much each character actually had about them. And when you think about it, Half of Swing's character is based around his fucking glove. Like, that's the most in-depth we got, correct? On a lot of these people. October's the goth chick. Phineas is, like, the funny, goofy dude. Swink is a super game nerd with his hat turned to the side with his glove. Hutch is a god at video games. And Abigail is a mysterious blonde chick. And that's about the most, like, uh, character development we get. Because not only are there, like, so what's there's five players, correct? And including the boss who's playing in a fucking, in an office building miles away. Yeah. So six players. I wish I would have written down all like the shit Phineas says. Finn, he has a bunch of fucking good one liners. Yeah, like one thing that sticks out to me about this movie, one quote he has is something like while they're waiting for the game to buff, he's like, uh, he's like this game, it just keeps on teasing me and I just want to fuck. Something like that. But so, yeah, they're waiting for this game to start up. They're kind of like at some type of load menu and they can't get the game to start. And it's like there's some type of passage on the screen. Yeah. And pretty much they're all wearing headsets with fucking mics. So at one point, Abigail suggests, hey, maybe we're supposed to read this thing. And Swing says, no, the technology is nowhere near this yet. So they start to recite it and it starts to work. Yeah, and where's right disappearing? After being read. And then as a group in unison, they all start to read off this fucking prayer. I can't remember what it was in the prayer, but it was more or less, you know, gothic -y like summoning type shit, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was just going to say on that part, too, because I there's still a fucking a game that you can do that to. If I seen some shit like that happening and words were disappearing, I ain't playing that fucking game. Fuck that. You said there isn't a game? Mm-mm. To where you can actually read it and then the words are just 
disappearing like that like it's voice activated like they were talking about bro i'd assume that it's like some type of african ponzi scheme and there's some guy in like somalia just stealing your fucking identity <laughs> i mean like like they have those singing games where like when you read it it like you you're reading it along along with it and it'll track like the tone of your voice and shit like that like like a rock band game they have twitch sings i think damn i well either way if if, if it's a scary game and me not knowing about that. See, I, I didn't even know about that. But if I seen the screen start doing that, I'm like, nope, I'm turning this off right now. That's just me. I'd probably play it. You'd play it? Yeah, because, I mean, how could you connect those fucking dots? Like, that could be in any circumstance. Like, say if you had a haunted microwave and any time you, like, typed in a certain, like, number while you're cooking a very specific burrito, you'd be cursed. You'd never know. It's true. Facts. You never know which ways you're going to get fucked. It's like this porn star always said. <laughs> if life can find a way to fuck you, it will. <laughs> <laughs> so they all read this fucking, like, saying, or this prayer in unison. Which that, all together, like, culminated, that sounds very questionable. What if, like, every time before one of these podcasts start, I, like, made you guys just start, like, reading some shit on the wall? I wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just like skip a couple words. Yeah, like we didn't start out like this. <laughs> I don't think I can do this anymore. I not suck. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so did you realize, did you guys catch that like as they're reading this prayer, like a shadow moves behind them on their couch? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so the goth chick says that the lore in the video game sounds familiar to her, because I guess there's some narration. So we learned that this game takes place in a place called... Uh... Now, this kind of fucked me up, the stuff about the game. Is it the Garouge Manor? I thought it was La Rouge, but when I looked it up, it said Garouge Manor, or yeah. Garouge Plantation. Garouge Plantation. Mm -hmm. And then we learn, you know, we're introduced to the <clears throat> main antagonist of this video game, Elizabeth Bathory. Who is a very tall, pale woman in a red dress, very skin tight. She's got a bun on her head. She doesn't really have any features, just pale skin and like black eyes, right? And through the fucking uh, narration, we learn, you know, the game is called, what do they say? The main objective of the game, stay alive. So the group is playing, they get to customize their own avatars, which I thought was fucking dope. Because that's my favorite aspect of like RPGs and shit, is you got to create your own character. Same. And their avatars got to look exactly fucking like them. Except for Swink's. Swink even had the fucking hat, bro. Like, maybe physically it wasn't, but his clothes, <laughs> spot on. Yeah. So they're all just kind of standing out in front of this plantation, they don't really know what they're doing. Hutch's character starts to move a little bit, and... Uh, a little girl walks out of the fucking shadows. Little twitchy ring girl. And uh, doesn't he throw a fucking rose at her? Or no, he pulls out like a crossbow. <laughs> yeah. But it's not a crossbow, it's a shotgun. Was it? Uh, yeah. I thought it was a crossbow. It yeah. looked like a shotgun. No, it looked like a crossbow to me. It didn't make crossbow sound effects. It didn't though. That. No, <laughs> what does did. a crossbow sound like? Go ahead, Francisco, make the sound. I think I, this is more your expertise. Yeah, okay, you have a choice. Either you tell me the crossbow sound, or you describe to me the difference between what a goat and a sheep sound like. <laughs> I plead the fifth, bro. Bro, you just gotta go. <laughs> That's all it does, right? Mm -hmm. Makes the fucking click sound of the crossbow clicking. Yeah. But anyway, so what is the difference between a sheep and a goat? Like the sounds they made. Yeah, you got me on that one, dude. I think one's more like, bye. The other one's like, more like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> we can move on now. Thank you. I thought about that one day, bro, and it just fucked with me like all day. But yeah, so this chick, this girl walks out from the shadows and Hutch shoots it with this crossbow that sounds like a shotgun. And uh, afterwards, he throws a rose on the, the girl's body to release her soul. Correct? Mm-hmm. And at this point, Finn's like, man, this game's kind of slow. And then there's an abrupt cut to the game turned into a fucking shoot-em-up. 
and they're in a cemetery running around shooting fucking hundreds of small children. I didn't think about that. They're murking kids in this motherfucker. That's pretty generally like a no-no in video games nowadays, correct? I think that's just a no-no no. in movies in general. Just something like that. That's why I was like, <sighs> when I seen that. Tons of games where you have to, like, especially scary games. Like, you have to do it in Doom. I think you gotta you, kill little kids? Yeah. Fuck no. You do it in, uh, what is that? Because even in Skyrim, in bro. Space, right? In Skyrim, there's all the mods. They don't let you kill the kids, right? But no, so yeah, these guys are killing kids by the fucking hundreds. And at some point, uh, Hutch's boss, they say his name, but I can't fucking remember it. He separates from the group, and while they're in the cemetery, he goes into, what do you call those? Is it just a tomb? The, I was going to say crypt. Crypts? Yeah. One of those, like you were saying, above ground uh, burial sites. Yeah. Like those all cement ones you can walk inside of where they seal it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he walks into one of those and shuts the door. And Finn's telling him, like, I wouldn't go in there, man. But he fucking does it anyways. So during this part, the group is, like, inside of the mansion at the plantation. And uh, Abigail's, like, spots a light inside of a wardrobe. In this real particular room with the fireplace. Sounds random, but it comes into play later. So while this is happening, the boss is, like, wandering in some tunnels under the cemetery. All by his lonesome, and he's still in communication with the group. Finn tells him, like, I've already been down there, man. There's not jack shit. Just a locked door. But when the boss gets there, the door's open, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he walks into this fucking room, and he gets snuck up on by Elizabeth Bathory. And she has garden, not garden shears, just big-ass shears, big scissors. Yeah. (laughs) She, like, pushes him onto a table, shivs him in his throat. But yeah, before that, his like control is like vibrating a lot too, and then that's when he threw his like last rose, and then that's when he starts saying he's like, "Oh yeah, ain't got no more roses." So his controller vibrated as she approached. No, it was like some some other spirit, because he threw that rose because he's like, or they're they're telling him like, just throw the rose in. So he does it, and then as soon as he walks in, he's like, "Damn, that was my last one," or something like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so he dies in the video game. And uh, he's obviously unnerved by this. And as he's playing, he sees, like, a shadow at the office building, right? (laughs) And he's kind of, like, rubbing his head like, I've been playing this fucking game too long. So he signs off, correct? And they all get off all at once. I believe, right? He's kind of, like, wandering around. He doesn't wander. He, like, leaves his office and starts walking down a hallway And then his office door, like, opens up by itself. So he has to turn around, and he's got to go, you know, he shuts it again, turns around, walks away, and it opens again. So he goes back, and uh, he goes into the office, and he kind of, like, you guys remember when he opened the door, he did that thing where he, like, pushes it open, and he goes, ah! Like, if somebody's in there. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Have you ever done that? Yeah. Me too. I don't do the whole scream, but like I aggressively walk into a room. I uh, <clears throat> at my old apartment, I used to have like, what do they call that? Like sleep paralysis and shit. Mm-hmm. So like I'd be like sleeping, and then like it'd be like I was awake, and I'd see like a dark shadow coming from the corner, and then the next thing I know is like in front of me. <clears throat> so like anytime I would start to get that feeling, as if I was like in sleep paralysis, but I was awake, mm-hmm. I'd just like yell. Just like random shit. Like, go fuck yourself. It's like, I don't know. In my mind at the time, I was like, well, if I let it know I'm not scared, it's going to stop fucking with me. Didn't work. (laughs) (laughs) Nah, so the boss, he like kind of does this thing where he opens his door and he's like, ah, nobody's there. So I think he closes the door again and he walks away. But this time he hears the buzz, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You make the buzz sound? Just like your mom's lightsaber, dude. (laughs) Oh! Holy shit. (laughs) So the boss hears the game controller buzzing. So he goes back into the office, and the controller's on the floor under his desk, correct? So I'm assuming he's hiding it, because he probably shouldn't be playing fucking video games at work. Did you see his chair? He had like a... 
one of the old ass like gaming chairs. Oh, so he wasn't hiding jack shit then? No, it had like the fucking analog sticks and shit on the sides. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he wasn't hiding it, but he had his controller under his desk. So he crawls, picks it up. As soon as he grabs it, it starts, it stops vibrating. But once he like gets up on his knees and he's looking over his desk, that's when he sees the woman in the red dress, correct? Mm-hmm. And what do they show? That it was just like her. She just like lunges at his ass, right? Is yeah. she holding the shears or does she not even have them? No, she, yeah, you can see the shears. So she lunges at dude, screen cuts. PG-13 movie, we're not going to see the goodies. So then the next scene is Hutch going to work. And uh, he sees police all over the office. And uh, <clears throat> he goes directly to the police. And the police are, they're pricks. Yeah. Right off the bat, they're like, you know, when's the last time you talked to him? Oh, uh, you talked to him last night. Who was with you? I'm going to need every single one of those people's contact information. And I don't know if Hutch couldn't tell that they were fucking shaking him down or not. It didn't seem like he did because he seemed too distraught about his boy being dead. It looked like he noticed like for a second, but he just like, he just didn't give a fuck. Yeah. I mean, that's one of them things like if you know you didn't do anything, why would you sweat it? Because like he had an alibi, right? Yeah. Plus oh, dude, I was with five people in a completely different location. Plus he's white. He's not going to get like. But he was getting some like non-white superpowers revoked, I feel, in this movie. Because he didn't get a lot of benefit of the doubt in any situation. This is true. So after the police get done kind of questioning him, he sees his boss's body in his office. He's laid out with his like neck hanging over the desk with the uh, the stab wounds in his chest, throat area. Is that right? Yeah. And so the next scene is they go back to the coffee shop, and uh, I think it's I think Hutch isn't there yet. It's just Finn, October, and Swink. I can't remember who's all the fuck there. For sure, Finn in October, because Finn's playing, like, the game still. And uh, he locates the boss's body in the torture chamber. Oh, yeah. And he kind of makes a joke about it, and, and uh, it offends everybody. And then for some reason, Finn goes into this tirade where he's like, fuck what you think, homeboy, more or less. And everybody's kind of like, oh, what the fuck's wrong with you, brody? So then the group has a conversation about the coincidence about people dying and playing the video game. Okay, so Hutch is there at this point. This is when they go out on the balcony on the roof. And he's talking to October and Abigail, correct? And I think (laughs) Swank is there too. And they're talking about how it's weird about how the boss died like he did in the video game. How Loomis died, how he died in the video game. I can't remember if they knew how Loomis died. Not in the video game, no. I don't think. I think they did. Yeah, they did because they reference it later on in the movie. Which I don't know how, but... Yeah, I don't know. But I mean... No, never mind. But as they start to have this conversation, Hutch kind of starts to like work himself up like, holy fuck. He kind of starts to figure out the rule of the game. He's kind of dabbling with the idea. Maybe if you die in the video game, you'll die in real life. And then he remembers Finn's playing the fucking game downstairs. So they all rush downstairs, and it looks like Finn's head is on the keyboard. Or on the table, or on the desk, like if he's laying down. <laughs> yeah. So they walk up, and they're like, oh my god, Finn. And then he leans back, and he's taking a hit of a fucking bong, correct? Yeah. And then, so, like, the next shot <clears throat> is this montage of, like, the group just kind of bullshitting around the coffee shop. Uh, I think October's fucking around behind the bar. Uh, Swink's playing with the computer monitor. Or the modem. I think the modem. The tower. Oh, yeah his, yeah, his computer. I genuinely feel like you didn't watch this. <laughs> his TV was <laughs> off and shit? No, I... No, it no, doesn't I, count, I, bro, I if you had porn in the other hand, like, as you were watching it. <laughs> then I didn't watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Said I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> no, there's bits and parts, like, the movie kind of lost... I lost a little interest, but I do remember that little part you're talking about. But yeah, he's messing with the PC tower. So October is, like, behind the coffee shop fucking uh, counter... Uh, Hutch is shaving, I think, in the mirror. And they both have, like, these visions. Uh, Swink sees blood appear on his keyboard, and while he's typing, he touches his face, so he puts blood all over his own face. October sees, like, the reflection of a little girl in a mirror. And uh, Hutch's face turns, like, zombified. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming this is kind of like supposed to be, I don't know, maybe a side effect from playing the game. Like as it's it's something that's going to keep growing. 
before, you know, you're full on just attacked by the spirit or some shit. And so the next scene is Finn messing with his car outside. So a big ass truck drives past Finn. That's supposed to be foreshadowing, I'm assuming, for later for him. So after this, Hutch goes back to his office at his job and he uh, he goes to his computer. And does he fucking hack the police database or some shit? Or is this or is there like an open records where you can look at like criminal files and like photo crime scene photos and shit? Yeah, that that part I didn't understand. Uh, I was thinking the same thing. Like, okay, did he hack that shit? Because I w- I wouldn't imagine like pictures of the death scene and shit being like public, right? Knowledge. Not to mention in an open investigation. Why would the fucking uh, report be out there? Yeah, because it wasn't a solved crime. And this comes back to what I was saying before too. We never once watched Hutch play a fucking video game. Oh, did that bother anybody? Like considering this, you know, his character is supposed to be a hardcore gamer. The hardcore gamer, bro. When does he ever touch a fucking console, a keyboard? Never. Like you, you just see him like at the beginning with everybody else, but it never like singles his character out except right. for when he kills the girl. When does he make video game references? When does he? Never. Like, I believe uh, Frankie Muniz, you know, uh, Swink's character is like a video game nerd. But even then, like, you know, he's playing with the fucking modem and shit. He's playing with computer stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, we can tell, like, all right, he's balls deep in, you know, video games. But Hutch, somebody just tells us, like, oh, you're a god of video games. Okay. <laughs> That's what we go by. Okay. And, uh, but so, yeah, so he supposedly hacks this computer, the police rot files. So as he's in the office, we see this is a genuinely creepy moment because it's like some girl like walks across the fucking cubicles or some shit. And just the way they shot it, the way the girl looks, the way she's walking, she's doing some like twitchy ass walk. Those twitchy ass walks have always scared me. But now, nah, so he sees so this girl's walking around in the background and absolutely nothing comes of it. Because Hutch just goes back to the coffee shop. He gets the group uh, together with the police records. And he says it's all too crazy to be a coincidence. And uh, Finn isn't present at this meeting. He's driving his car in some back road. But during this group meeting, October, she uh, brings up the legend of the Garouge Plantation. And she says that it, it's a real story. And the woman who lived there was crazy. And she would kill her servant girls. And she ended up being walled up inside, bricked up inside of her own tower. So more or less, they took the story of the actual Elizabeth, Elizabeth Bathory and set it in southern United States in a plantation, correct? Mm-hmm. But yeah, so as she's like giving this exposition, that nigga Hutch is like, I don't give a fuck. I just want to stop this stuff, yo. He's like, I don't care if it's real or not. And so the next scene, you know, is when he acknowledges like, hey, where's Finn? And we get Finn in his car fucking singing some song doing karaoke and uh, as he's driving he visibly notices something happens with the sun right doesn't it get like cloudy out of nowhere yeah i think he sees like the clouds coming from behind him in his rear view mirror the clouds approach fog starts to appear in the road and uh, he gets nervous at this point already visibly yeah like speeds up a little bit and so he ends up seeing one of these little like uh, ghost kids in the road, correct? Mm-hmm. So he has to veer out of the way. And it looks like he's going to hit a tree, but he doesn't. He slows just in time. And so he gets out of his car, right? And I think he was whipping a fucking convertible. And when he gets out of the car, he says the car won't start back up, correct? So he decides to call the coffee shop or whoever's there. I can't remember if he had a cell phone or some shit. It's relevant. Yeah. He calls the gets in contact with the group somehow from his phone. And he tells him that he's freaked out. And uh, October reminds him, like, hey, you don't got to be scared. You know, you didn't die in the game yet, so you're golden, pony boy. And the group says they're going to go to get him. So while Finn's waiting at the in the in by the car, he's all like, yeah, she's right. I didn't die in the game. But then he starts to hear horses. So he's, like, standing in the middle of the fucking road, correct? Mm-hmm. Just looking back and forth, which is a horrible idea. I don't give a fuck where I'm at, dog. I'm not standing in the middle of the road. I'm always off to the side. It's just common sense. Is it not? Smart if you don't think about it. Smart if you don't think about it. (laughs) So then at this point, while he's looking back and forth, he's still hearing the horses. And then, of course, he does like one turn. And when he looks behind him, there is a horse carriage right in his fucking face. And it runs him over. And 
This was horrible, the effects. Do you remember it? Yeah. Yeah. It, like, doesn't look like his body's really getting run over. It just looks like he's rolling on the ground, very CGI'd. And then he just stops. And it's very apparent to when, like, the cut happened from him rolling to him laying on the ground. Could you guys make all that out? Mm-hmm. Yep. That was, like, a very, like, obnoxiously bad effects in this movie. So then the rest of the group finally pulls up. And uh, they find his body, right? The cops aren't there. And uh, I think October runs up. She grabs his body. She's kind of like cradling him, cradling him. And then uh, after that, the cops show up. And the whole group has to stay there, give statements and shit, I'm assuming. Uh, Before that, though, uh, whenever they find his body, the camera's like it's an overhead shot of October holding uh, Finn. And the camera switches to the game, and we see that Finn's avatar is, like, laid in the exact same position as he was when he died. Yeah. Because when he was in the cafe, like, whatever the fuck that is, like, the gamer's cafe or whatever, he was about to get ran over. But he hit pause. But he hit pause. So it's at this point that Hutch finally tries to explain to the cops what's cracking. Uh, What do you guys think about that part? Would you even, like, try to tell the police? No. Nobody's going to believe you. Yeah, no. They would, like, try to commit your ass, right? Yeah. So after this conversation, uh, the cop tells Hutch to take a walk. And while this is happening, there's uh, Swinks having a conversation with the detective's partner. I literally just have him marked down as the asshole cop. It's a white dude. So uh, he fucking, he pulls up the laptop, right? And he just starts playing the game. And he's like, I'm going to see what this game's all about. And they're trying to warn him not to. But I swear to God, his hands are on the keyboard for, like, five seconds and he gets killed in the most disturbing way in the entire game Mm -hmm. he's like sitting in a chair (laughs) and like hooks going to each side of his mouth and like tear his face open right Mm -hmm. that's probably the most graphic part not the most graphic but one of them so hutch walks up on the cop like as he dies in the game right and he tries to like shove him off away from the computer which seems like a questionable move to pull on a cop I feel like you'll get arrested for, like, if I flick the cop, like, in his chest, you're going to jail. But so then the next scene is, like, they're still at the crime scene, and uh, all the police are gone. And it's just the group. Uh, Hutch, Abigail, October, and Swink. And uh, they're all, like, leaning on the car, right? And uh, for this scene, it's pretty much just October and Abigail guilt tripping the shit out of Hutch. How could you bring us this game? You are such a horrible person. You fuck. <laughs> That's word for word what they tell him. Yeah. And he's just like, yeah, my yeah. bad. I would have fought him on it, man, because it was a uh... fuck. It was Finn's idea, yeah, right? It was Finn's idea to play it. He's the one that went in the bag. And uh, at this point, October kind of makes this proclamation. She's like, I want Hutch to find out everything about the game. And uh, I want to hurt whoever did this, which is actually pretty cool. Like, you would think that would be Hutch's idea, but that was October's. And then she says, she tells Abigail to do something. To try to figure out... Fuck, because she formulates a plan. She tells Hutch to try to figure out who made the game, and then she tells Abigail and Swink to do something. To go to Loomis's? Or she tells uh, Hutch to go to Loomis's to look for any information about the game, right? Yeah, and she sent uh, Abigail with him. That's right. And then October and Swink go and read all those fucking books they look into the lore yeah okay so yeah so once again hutch isn't doing such a hot job as a fucking main guy right now oh and i forgot to mention that there's like this backstory about hutch and fire every time someone turns on a lighter hutch just like stares at the flame and he's like uh no daddy no <laughs> 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 that's exactly what it is it's like a flashback to him as a kid like surrounded by flames is it fucked up that we laughed at that right now this josh's joke man. <laughs> dude fucking mr deeds popped into my mind that was, that was a reference huh when he yeah. uh so he had to get beat by his dad <laughs> yeah <laughs> using foul language in front of the lady so after this, the next scene is the asshole cop goes to a video game store. And to show you how little I played video games in my head, I was like, there's no such thing as a fucking video game store. And then I thought about it like the next three times we saw it. I was like, ah, yeah, there's, there's a GameStop. <laughs> Thinking back then, it was Funko Land. Funko Land. Yeah. I didn't remember that. 
GameStop bought Funko Land. But you could also get games at uh, Blockbuster. I remember Blockbuster. So this cop is at the uh, video game store, and he's kind of questioning the clerk about if he's ever heard of the game, right? Yeah. And he's like, have you ever heard of this underground game called blah, blah, blah? And the clerk's like, no. But the clerk has a quote he tells the cop. He's like, well, you know, the game is just an extension of its creator. Which is a funny thing, because we never learn who created the fucking game. Yeah. I didn't I didn't catch that when he said it. Mm-hmm. To me, like, the game clerk was just, like, on some shit. Yeah. He'd, he looked tweaked out. Yeah, he looked tweaked the fuck out. I completely forgot where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the cop at the uh, video game store. Oh, yeah. So he's getting he's getting information from the clerk, and it goes fucking nowhere. He goes out to his car in the parking lot, steps into the car. His head explodes inside of the fucking car. Apparently, he looks in the mirror. He sees like a demon child in the back seat. But yeah, this was the bloody scene I was talking about because like blood covers the entire inside of his car, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like the one gory moment in this movie, at least in my opinion. So Hutch and Abigail go to Loomis's house, and uh, Hutch. I, at first, I thought it was random, but then it kind of made sense that Hutch uh, gives some exposition about him and Loomis's relationship. That apparently Hutch's parents used to get into fights a lot, so when this would happen, Hutch would go to Loomis's house. And uh, apparently, this is when he brings up the story that at some point, uh, his dad thought the mom was cheating. Correct. Mm-hmm. So he decided to set the house on fire, and he killed the mom, correct? hmm And he didn't die. He's in prison. Because he says he'll get out when I'm, like, 74 or something. I thought he said he'll get out when he's 76. Right. Which doesn't make any fucking sense, dog. You set your fucking house on fire and murk your wife? I thought that's pretty much like a deal breaker. All right, though. So he tells the story about that. So that's why he's afraid of fire, because his dad almost caught him on fire. And also at this moment, Abigail chooses to try to steal his thunder and be like, because I guess she had led the group on on to believe that her life was perfect. She lived on a farm. Everything. Life was beautiful. She's going to Princeton. Going to Princeton. She's only sucked two dicks. It's a great life. And uh, she decides to tell him at this moment, you know, I'm homeless. My family's all fucked up. I don't really talk to anybody. I'm all alone. Life is miserable. Can I move in with you? Word for word. Word for word. And so this is supposed to be character development, but I don't fucking feel it. Like, you can't just tell us your backstory. Like, in one moment, you know? I don't feel like that's good storytelling, in my opinion. I don't know, but just on that part in particular, do you guys have thoughts about that? Like, Yeah, I didn't I didn't like it. Like, like you said, I, I felt like it was too short. Like, they didn't... Like, I can understand his story because they, like, they say it or whatever the fuck. I don't think that's character development on his part, really. But, like, supposedly hers for just coming clean. But, I don't know. Like, being afraid of fire isn't a character trait. No, not, like, not enough to, like, cover up for an entire thing. No. Like, anytime someone turns on the lighter and you wince, that's not, that's not a trait. That's, like, a reaction. And as for her... Like, okay, we learn that she's homeless, but when at any point is that relevant to the story? When is there any moment when she's has less money than everybody? They could have done that. Where she's using an excuse to sleep at someone's house, taking a shower. Any of those moments. Those could have been like, oh, okay, that makes sense why she's doing that. But it's not. It's not relevant whatsoever. The whole story could go by and we could know that she doesn't have a perfect life and it'd be fine. But anyway, so yeah, I just thought that scene was kind of random. So they break into Loomis's house, and they're kind of walking around, and they see that the fucking house is still covered in blood. Nobody cleaned that shit. So they end up going into Loomis's bedroom, and they find a Blackberry, right? Is that what that is? Find what? A Blackberry. They find some device that isn't a phone, but looks like a phone. Oh, yeah, yeah. They find something that's a cell phone, but not quite a cell phone. And it has all types of uh, records. It has all the game information, correct? Yeah, kind of like a pager. He finds it in the computer tower. And it has the game developer address on it. So then he calls up October. And uh, October tells Hutch that in an old witch hunter's book, correct? This is the thing. A witch hunter's book. She learns that to kill a witch, you got to put three nails in her. One in the neck, one in the chest, and one in the head. And then you got to burn her. And that's science. Because now she's a witch, apparently. They just decided at this moment, correct? Mm-hmm. She's not a ghost. 
not a demon. She's a witch. Just don't think about it too much, dude. It'll make more sense. Okay. <laughs> so while this conversation's happening, the TV's on in the background, and Swink and October see that on the news they've discovered the uh, body of the asshole cop in his car. And immediately, they're all suspects, correct? Or is it just Hutch? I think it's just Hutch. But they go to the, their house. Yeah, you got me there. So yeah, so they pull up on them, and the cops are right outside of uh, wherever October and Swink are, so they gotta make an escape from wherever they're at. I can't even fucking think of it. So the group all decides to meet up at Loomis' house. Did you guys connect that's where they went? Yeah. It took me a second. So they're all just chilling at fucking Loomis' crib with the fucking body parts and shit everywhere, or at least the blood. Nobody mentions it, nobody thinks to clean it up. So once they all, once Hutch and Abigail, and they're all together, they notice that Swink's so whose laptop is it? Is it Loomis's laptop they're fucking with? I think it was Loomis's. So they see Loomis's laptop is open with the game playing. And uh, they kind of see uh, October's avatar. And they're like, where the fuck is October at? Because she's not inside the house with Swink, Abigail, and Hutch. And Swink says, oh, she was outside smoking. And so October is walking around somewhere in their subdivision, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, she sees, like, uh, what do you call those? A renovated house? Or a house that's being built? It's got, like, tarps and shit all over it. A developed house. Yeah. And she sees, like, a spirit, correct? And she immediately gets the idea to go inside the house. Like, we say these a lot in this podcast. Like, I'm almost tempted to change the name of the fucking podcast. But I can't say this, like, phrase enough. Um, White people shit, guys. Because she goes inside the fucking thing, right? In in her defense, she said that she was going to, like, hurt whatever did it. So, she went in there. Like She goes in there, grabs three nails and a hammer. Like, she's she's ready to, like... Do some damage. Yeah. Would you do it? Fuck, no. <laughs> <laughs> Would you do it? Nah. Would I do it? Yeah. Nah. Well, what if it happened to one of us? Would you still do it? Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I would go and find one of those like uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind fucking memory erasers. Forget all about you. So October walks into the fucking renovated house, right? And uh, you like you said, she grabs. No, first thing she grabs is a nail gun. So she's gonna use the nail gun. And I thought of Jesus immediately. There was a cord on this one. I thought of him too. There was a cord on it. Yeah. I thought I thought she grabbed the hammer and the nails, and then I thought to myself, I was like, why doesn't she just buy this, like, or, like, why doesn't she grab the uh, cordless, fucking airless nail gun and just shoot this shit? <laughs> so she actually sees the ghost woman in the red dress, and she tries to shoot her with the nail gun, but the nails go through her and hit the wall, correct? Mm-hmm. So now she tries to run, because she's in this situation to begin with, and a chain fucking magically wraps around her foot, drags her into the fucking darkness. Okay, so I wasn't just tripping. I was like, did I miss something on that? I was like, did that chain just come out of nowhere? Yeah. It's a phantom chain, bro. Okay. The same one that got Lo- Loomis. So she ends up being hung from the ceiling by this phantom chain that's into phantom support, that's into phantom supporting her weight, right? We don't know where it's hanging from. Don't need to. It's a supernatural movie, man. Exactly. We We don't worry about that stuff. Yeah. So now she's upside down and face to face. And this is kind of like the best shot we get of uh, Elizabeth Bathory. That name really fucks me up. Because <clears throat> I think I was saying the wrong name the whole time, like during the movie. I think I was saying Bowery. But it's Bathory. So, like, we get our best view of the antagonist in this part. What did you think about her look? Again, like I said, for back in the day, I can see why it would be scary. But right now, just, you know. Yeah. It's kind of, I don't know, like unsatisfying. So she was like CGI, right? Like it's not a real person, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And you can really tell with the fucking hair. The hair really fucked it up. Yeah. Because, you know, hair has its textures that you can't really duplicate. At least maybe now they can, but at that time especially, it just looks like one solid shape. Mm -hmm. So the hair really threw me the fuck off. I'm trying to think of like what she looked like. Like shit. Actually, Pale face with no real features, correct? Yeah. Zero features. Just yeah. a red dress, pale white face. I can 
Did she have like, black eyes? I think she did have black eyes. But I was like, I don't know, because like before then, like we had seen her from afar, and like the whole like build up to it, I was like, oh, we're gonna see like up close, she's gonna be a little more scary, something. It, it's like they didn't even try. You know, I feel like. Uh, I'm jumping ahead, but at the end, I feel like it's a lot better when it was the actual, like, in-person version. Nah, but so, October's hung from the ceiling. She's face-to-face with Elizabeth. And I believe she gets her throat slit. Yeah. And the group finds her as she's laying on the ground. She's still alive, but she is dying. And she dies in Hutch's arms, I believe. Yeah. So, her death was my favorite one. Because her last words were fuck you rather than like being scared and shit she oh, okay. knew that like she knew she was gonna die but she, she wasn't defeated Does she was a sense? cool character yeah like she went out she went out like a g like i feel like they definitely gave her some traits that should have definitely been instilled upon fucking hutch unfortunately yeah. correct yeah. yeah i feel like they split the traits that hutch should have had between her and uh like, she definitely had more leadership qualities. Yeah. I can't remember that guy's name. Because, like I said, she's the one who formulates the plan. Like, all right, you're going to go to Loomis's. We're going to go do this, right? But so anyway, so October dies. And uh, the next scene is the whole group in a van. They're on their way to this address to find a game developer, correct? And, of course, the address they pull up to is the fucking mansion. Now, did you guys notice... None of them recognized that the mansion was the one from the fucking video game initially. Yeah. Like, bro. It bothered me. Nigga. I'm trying to, like, reference, like, something, a video game that you would end up in and not, like, connect the dots. Nothing comes to mind? Yeah, I would would realize, like, every time. Like, it's the equivalent of, like, walking around. Like, you end up on some platforms and you see little boxes with, like, mushrooms in them. And a little Italian plumber's throwing fireballs into your asshole. And you're like, I've never seen this before. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like the buildup of like the Silent Hill video games where like you're just walking through fog. You don't really know where you're at. Shit. Or the character doesn't know where they're at. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, so the group pulls up to this fucking a southern mansion that has a giant ass field attached to it. And they don't connect the dots whatsoever. They're just kind of like, huh, this, the guy even says, Hutch says at one point, this looks like a weird place to make a video game. What the fuck is wrong with you, bro? So Hutch and Abigail decide to go inside the fucking mansion. And they hear the buzzing sound as they walk in. And you know what their first move is, guys? Do you know what it is? They separate. You go that way. I'm going to go this way. Okay? Okay. So Abigail's like finds a doll of the woman in red with like surrounded by little doll children. So now she's like, that's kind of weird. That's a very weird coincidence. Still doesn't connect where the fuck she's at. So at this point, they're walking around the mansion and Swink is playing the game because that's their game plan. They're going to walk around the mansion and Swink is going to distract the game so it can't murk anybody like on its own. And he's, like, walking around in the game, and he happens to be, like, the perfect angle to where he can see, like, the outside of the mansion. And it's at that moment where he goes, I wonder. Still isn't fucking sold. So he calls up Hutch, right, while Hutch is inside. And he's like, all right, so we're going to try this. Hutch, look to your fucking left. Is this door there? Yep, yep. Turn that way. Go down this hall. Go that way. Walk out front. Go to the backyard. And Hutch is like, what's going on, man? I don't understand what's happening. (laughs) And he leads him all the way to some gates in the back of the crib that are on the outside. And Hutch sees the cemetery from the video game. And it all fucking happens. That's the moment when he's like, oh. And simultaneously, Abigail's inside the house. And she's like in a bedroom. And uh, she's looking at a fireplace and a fucking wardrobe closet. And it's at this moment she recalls the scene from earlier when she was playing the video game. And she realizes she's looking at the exact same thing. That was so fucking stupid. I can't even save this thought for the end of the movie. This is, That was fucking ridiculous, bro. That it took them this long and it had to be this convoluted for them to figure out where the fuck they were at. 
Can you guys rationalize that to me? Is there any way that makes sense to you? They're just dumb. <laughs> it was yeah. pretty stupid. I think that was the most annoying thing in the movie. That that well, and washing the fucking red solo cups. So that as I said, so you guys say, well, no. That that definitely was number one. But there was a number two for me as well. That was just stupid as fuck in this movie. Did we already go past it? Yes. Oh, okay. But yeah, so I mean like they had to do all that and now they realize, oh, okay, this is the mansion from the video game. And like I said, Abigail sees a fucking wardrobe that she realized that she recognized from earlier in the game, and you know what she decides to do, guys? She goes into it. I'm gonna go through the secret crawl space that's inside the wardrobe all by myself. As uh, Hudge is outside still looking at the cemetery. So now she's just alone in this giant ass mansion, and she decides I'm gonna go into this secret room, walk up some stairs. It looks like she's in like an attic or something, correct? Yeah, so there's like old ass like black and white pictures everywhere. There's uh, dolls pages with, from books. Dolls with maggots crawling out of the eyes. Yeah. <clears throat> now this is supposed to be here's a little lesson in film, I think, because I wasn't really creeped out watching this scene. There's something I don't know if it was the atmosphere, the music, the way the lighting was done, the way it was shot, like it didn't feel like What's going to happen? Like, it was kind of just like, oh, she's walking around her room. Yeah. The dolls just kind of seemed out of place, to be honest. Yeah, like, I didn't even notice the dolls. Like, I feel like they weren't even there. They're just putting random shots of dolls. Because that's what I put down as I was like, she, it's honestly not a creepy shot. But it, I think it's supposed to be. So, she ends up finding a picture of Elizabeth when she was younger. And in here I wrote, dime. Young Elizabeth can get it. <laughs> just me nah I second that you I agree hmm. and then the lights dim like in the background cause she finds shears in that picture and like the camera shots over her shoulder and there's one light bulb that starts to go dark and then I think she starts to scream once the light completely goes and Hutch hears her from outside so he starts to run inside the mansion and he's like fuck how do I get to her? So he starts using Swink as navigation, pretty much. And Swink leads him to a fucking... To, like, up some stairs that lead to, like, a trap door. Mm. But it's got a lock on it. So he's like, man, Swink, I need, like, a crowbar or something. So Swink, in the game, puts a crowbar on the steps right in front of him. Hutch looks down. There's a crowbar right in front of him. I actually didn't mind that. That was cool, but... <clears throat> I will talk about it. So he puts the crowbar down and he picks it up, pries the door open. We never actually see him break the lock. So Abigail is crawling around the floor in the hidden room. She's completely become useless. Her fear is just a crawl into the fetal position, apparently. What do they call that? Uh, damsel in distress? She becomes the damsel in distress immediately. Yeah. She completely understands her role. So Hutch is running through the house trying to get to Abigail, but Swink's avatar gets there first. So he actually like walks in on this like video game version of Abigail about to be killed by this woman, right? Mm -hmm. But he throws roses on the floor, correct? Yeah. And makes them all vanish. So Hutch walks in the room just after this, where there's nobody in the room now. And uh, him and Abigail embrace, and he kisses her, correct? Perfect time for romance. Perfect time. They've never really had any type of like romantic interaction before this. He mm -hmm. just goes for it. It fits. Mm -hmm. And what I was thinking in my head was like, where's Swinks? Thank you. Yeah, right. He's the one who technically saved it, bro. Mm -hmm. But so after this moment, the group kind of talks on the phone and they're, they remind like how they're supposed to kill Elizabeth. So, as this is happening, I think Swink's like, because he's playing, that's another thing. He's playing the laptop in the middle of the fucking road in a van. Mm -hmm. Things not connected to anything. It's supposed to be an online game, right? 
So yeah, so he walks away from the van to have this phone conversation. And while they're talking, the van door is shut. And the game starts playing by itself. So he's like, that's cheating, bitch. <laughs> so then he reaches his hand in the fucking uh, the van. And he manages, he's about to get run over by carriage, right? Mm-hmm. He's standing in the middle of the road. He manages to hit a button to where his guy like flips out of the way. Just in time. So now he's playing from outside the van, but for some reason he still breaks the window out. Now this is a really obnoxious scene, because when he breaks the window out, it makes the weirdest fucking noise in the world. It doesn't sound like a car window breaking. Like, it sounds like, you know, a house window breaking. They're very distinctly different. Yeah. Did you guys catch that? I didn't, but now I do. Yeah. Because when he broke it in, remember the whole fucking window just like straight shattered in. Mm. car windows don't work like that correct and uh he hops in the car and he's about to start playing again and then like the sky gets dark like what happened to finn correct and that's when he says i think that's the part where he's like bitch that's cheating then he hops out of the car and he starts running says fuck the game because the ghost is gonna try to murk him while he's actually playing the game right so as he's running from the van uh he's being chased by the horse carriage correct Mm mm-hmm and he's like running through a field and shit, and he ends up landing in like a fucking bush of roses. And the actual carriage like stops right in front of the bush of roses, and we see feet get out of the carriage, and they're walking towards him, correct? Mm-hmm. Did they actually show old girl? I thought they did. I can't remember. So, as this whole like series of events happens, uh, Hutch and Abigail are going towards the van. And they walk up on the laptop, and from the laptop, they see the game over screen on the laptop, and it's the camera's panning over uh, Swink's body laying in the bushes, correct? So we're supposed to assume Swink is dead at this moment. So after this, Hutch and Abigail go into the cemetery part of the plantation, correct? Yeah. Because now they're going to go... There's a tower, by the way. There's a tower I forgot to mention. A giant-ass tower overlooking the cemetery. Thank Something you. else these motherfuckers did not see. Yeah, that you can't see from the side of the road. And this tower looks like it goes about... I can't even describe how tall it goes. It's bigger than a fucking normal building. Yeah. Correct? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, now they're going to go to this tower, because that's where Elizabeth sat. And uh, Hutch pulls some nails out of one of the crypts the tomb things so now he has his three nails and uh they're uh, hutch and abigail are about to walk into one of these crypts but then a horse carriage starts coming to chase him and hutch kind of like pushes abigail into the crypt and he's kind of like just staring at this fucking horse carriage that's coming and he pulls a rose out of his pocket and he just holds a rose up to the carriage why the man thought this would work is very confusing to me i mean i understand the rules of the game but like it's a horse carriage bro that's putting, like, a lot of faith in the fucking Rose. I think he was thinking, like, if, I don't know, they can come out, maybe. Or it, maybe it was the uh, the crowbar situation. Or, like, swing through the crowbar on the fucking stairs, and then he grabbed it. So he was like, oh, maybe they work out here, too. That's true. Still, though, man, I feel like that took some giant-ass fucking stones. Yeah, I wouldn't have. He could have easily just gone into the fucking crypt. He didn't have to do that. No. Was that supposed to be like in honor of like Swink and Finn? Didn't he hand her the bag too? Because the bag was full of roses and the nails and the yeah. shears. So, he so that was definitely a player too. move. It's like, she's gonna love this. <laughs> 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 I like the way you said it. That works. <laughs> so anyway, so the carriage disappears and now they both... Hutch and Abigail have gone into the crypts. They've gone into the tunnels under the cemetery. And it's at this point that they start to get chased by a fuck ton of CG zombie girls. Ring girls. Ghost girls. Demon girls. We never know what the fuck they are. But they're like crawling all over the floor. Some of them are walking on the walls. Like as a video game it's effective. But like for a movie. Kind of corny. So they get chased into the tor- to our torture room, correct? And they mm-hmm. shut the door. Now they're locked in this fucking torture room. And uh, Abigail decides to just stand around and take in the fucking sights. And Hutch, he says, fuck her. He just keeps walking. He's like 20 feet in front of this bitch. Walks into a door to go to the tower. He's like, hey, look, the tower. Door shuts. 
bam. Immediately, like, bro, we're holding fucking hands in this fucking place. Like, why is there any distance between you? So they have this, like, moment because this door that's separating them has, like, uh, bars for windows, right? Like a little win- mini window they could talk through. And uh, Hutch is like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure out a way to get you out of here. And Abigail's like, she gives him the Titanic speech. You got to let me go, Jack. You got to let me go. So they, like, have a, doesn't he hand her a rose? Or does she give him the, yeah, she hand, he hands her one rose, correct? Yeah. She handed him the, uh, the, the nails. shears. Are the shears? Yeah. I think both, maybe. The nails and the shears. And they kiss through the bars, and Hutch kind of pieces the fuck out. So when he gets to the top of the tower, he finds Elizabeth's actual body laying in a bed. I much, much prefer actual Elizabeth, because this is a real person. This isn't the CGI thing they've been showing the whole movie. Yeah. Yeah. So once he finds uh, Elizabeth laying in the bed, they're kind of, the scene's kind of gravitating, not gravitating, it's kind of uh, cutting between Abigail downstairs She's pulling the fucking petals off the rose. Yeah, that shit drove me fucking crazy. I just wanted to jump into the movie for like five seconds and just slap her as many times as I could in five seconds. Like, I just wanted to set a record. Like, if I could do 30 slaps in five seconds, I would. (laughs) She was like pulling them off saying, he loves me, he loves me not, right? And it's like, I think you might need that for those fucking petals, yo. I don't know if it works if you strip the whole fucking rose. <laughs> Look, man, nobody said that she was good at making decisions. <laughs> She's clearly homeless for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't it, bro? Because, like, what else could it be? This bitch doesn't know how to value things, obviously. <laughs> you guys have known each other for a couple of days. And he pushed you into a tomb by yourself. So, as she's saying this, Hutch starts fucking hitting the nails into Elizabeth's sleeping body, correct? And she's not reacting to the nails. No. Chest, neck, head. But while he's hitting these nails into her, Abigail starts to see the lights kind of dim wherever she's at. And when the lights come back up, she's strung up by her foot. And she sees Elizabeth approaching her with shears. But as Hutch hits the final nail into Elizabeth's head, Elizabeth disappears from this scene with Abigail. So I got kind of confused on this part because Hutch like turns his back to the bed. Does he drop something? He knocked he knocked something over, but I think he also like dropped the lighter. Yeah, so he's like on his knees, like with his back towards the bed. And we see behind him, uh, Elizabeth gets up like the Undertaker. Mm -hmm. But he was like he was on the ground. For an un- unreasonable amount of time. Like, it was like Thelma from Scooby-Doo looking for her glasses. Right. Because he's he's on his knees for long enough for, like, each of these nails to, like, slowly, like, come out of her body without her touching him, right? Mm-hmm. Forehead, neck, chest. I thought this was actually, like, kind of a creepy scene. Like, it looked well done. Because I like the design of, like, actual Elizabeth, the person, more so than without, like, the effects. But, like, so she's rising from the bed with the nails coming out. And he never turns around, but he, like, kind of looks up and he has this look, like, if he can sense that she's getting up, right? Because he looks at, like, the laptop and he sees the reflective case on it. It's like a mirror material. And he hears Finn's voice, like... She doesn't like the look of mirrors or some shit. And October's voice, right? Mm-hmm. That the woman doesn't like to see herself in the mirror. So whenever she gets up and she's like right behind him, right? He stands up and he turns around and he uses the laptop as a shield so that the mirror is pointed right at Elizabeth. And as soon as she sees it, she like kind of her mouth opens like a fucking foot. Chin drops down to like her boobs. And she's like screaming, right? What do you guys think of that part? I thought she was going to do, like, actually do something, you know, rather than just fucking scream. Yeah. I thought it looked cool. I thought it was an interesting effect. I don't feel like I've seen that too much, like the mouth fucking dropping that far. I feel like that's a video game thing. No, well, it was like that for the ring, if they saw the whatever. little boy. 
<laughs> what? That's that the first thing that popped in my head. When when they from see Home the Alone? Little, no, the little boy in the ring, the little Asian kid. Yeah, he like puts his hands on his face when they're uh, somebody's about, like looking in the attic, right? You talking about the grudge? I, I might. Yeah, he's be. talking about the grudge. I fucking might be, but I don't know. Both movies were pretty much the same shit. One you watch a movie, the other one you go into somebody's house. Science. Yes. <laughs> so, after Elizabeth screams, Hutch busts out the Zippo. So, the, the mirror thing doesn't necessarily hurt her. It just distracts her, right? Because mm-hmm. he busts out the Zippo and he drops it. Did I miss the scene where he poured gasoline? That's the thing that the thing that he knocked over. He knocked over like a lantern or something. Ah, okay. Because he just drops the little Zippo on the floor, sets the bitch on fire, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The whole room's on fire. And uh, Hutch goes into PT, PTSD mode again. You know, no, daddy, no. <laughs> and uh, he's just cowering in the corner. And uh, while the whole room's starting to get engulfed in flames, the door kicks open and we see Swink. My boy pulls Hutch out of the fucking room. We see Abigail, too. And the last shot is of the entire like bedroom and tower on fire. Oh, yeah, when Swink kicks the door open, he's holding a whole fucking bush. So he didn't just bring roses. He bought like an, he brought an entire fucking the bush from the ground. He tore the roots out and everything, which I thought looked funny. So I have here that the next scene is at the video game store. Mm-hmm. So we really never see what happens to the group after this. No. They literally just go. So the last time we see the group, we see Swink, Abigail, and Hutch is when they pull their they pull them out of the uh, flaming tower. There's never any exposition or them talking. This is the last time we see them. Mm-hmm. Wow. So the next scene is uh, the video game store. The clerk from earlier he's cutting open cutting open a box and he pulls out "Stay Alive." Correct. Yeah. And as we see him walking around the store, we see that there's, like, promotion and shit for this game. And uh, he pops it into a PlayStation 2 console. And then you see the game start up on the screen inside the store. And that's more or less how the movie ends. Worldwide, baby. Worldwide. So that's Stay Alive. All right, boys. Let me have it. (laughs) All right. So... Kind of like how you were saying about the whole um, them acting stupid when they're at the mansion and all that, or house, whatever the fuck it is. There was one scene where um, October was pretty much explaining the whole story about, what's her name, Elizabeth, whatever? Bathory. But yeah, Elizabeth Bathory. And a fucking Hutch was all like, no, that's impossible. There's no way. Pretty much like making her sound stupid. He's like, he's like, there's, there's no way that's possible. That the blah blah this. I'm like, so, you're thinking, you can die off of a fucking video game, but a fucking, a ghost story like that, that's completely impossible. That's insane for you. Okay. I was, I was thinking the same thing, but then when, whenever you like, went back, whenever you went over it, I was like, okay, maybe I'm just like remembering from a different movie, but. Yeah, and yeah, it was, it was that, and that like that that right there annoyed me. I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, he's like, he wants them to believe him about the video game, but when she actually says something that actually makes sense, so about when she it, brings up the lore, he's like, no, 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 it's too much. Yeah, like yeah. you're you're just reaching out. I'm like, what? I was like, that actually makes sense. I think that was before though he started like going for the theory about the video game. No, it, that was when he had after he showed them the pictures and shit of the uh, cases. Yeah, he was. He literally told me, he's like, see, this is how they died in the game, and this is how they died in real life." And so then she starts it. bringing up like extra. She's like, "Yeah," and on top of that, and he's like, "You've gone too far. You yeah, stop." Yeah, she was probably like, "You're wrong." <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's so I was all like, "What?" Like I just that part really annoyed the fuck out of me. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. And other than that, it's just like acting wise, I don't know, bro. I don't. I don't think it was more so the acting. I think it was the writing. It could have been that then, but something yeah. was just like, like I said, it just it was losing my interest here and there. And I had like I literally had to focus a lot into the movie because I like the actors, I like the characters. It's just they didn't have a lot to do. 
They didn't have a lot to do. They didn't have a lot to say. True. True. Like, the dude Finn, bro, he was just doing everything he could, I feel like, to entertain. But it just all seemed random, like, in the grand scheme of the movie. Yeah. Abigail was just there to be eye candy. October was a kind of interesting character, and even then she was pretty paper thin. Her whole character was her, you know, allegiance to her brother. Yeah. Hutch was useless. He was just there to connect everybody together. Yeah. And uh, fucking Swank, he was just a punching bag. Pretty much sums it up, man. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot wrong. Like, the the effects. I didn't care for the overall design of uh, Elizabeth. At least, you know, throughout most of the movie. I feel like it didn't age well. Uh, not at all. Mm-mm. Like, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't get why they made that decision to use CGI instead of the actual actress. But even the actual actress, it might have been more effective, I feel. Uh, that's, yeah. But back then, was CGI, like, a big thing, too? That's what I'm trying to think of, like, movies that were made then and there. I don't know. It's almost like they were trying to make, like, make it so that, like, it it was the video game her that was doing all the killing mm-hmm. until you actually see the real her. Like, the her real body is, like, locked up. That's why she can't, like, So her come spirit out. is the video game version. Yeah. I can kind of see that, but... I, I don't like it, though. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I thought, the, like, those little zombie kids were kind of creepy. To a point, just, yeah. Like, just the way they were moving. That's it. I mean, that, but if they would have just had that in that one scene, then yeah, it would have been creepy. But since they showed it repeatedly, like, the creepiness of it just kind of went away a little bit. So. I could see that. So, they did do it a handful of times, but, like, me and him said, like, did it ever go away for you? Because that's, like, a specific thing for me that fucks me up. So, every time I see it, it gets me. Um, when it was all of them in the hallway, like a, yeah. a fuck ton of them in the hallway, that's when I was like, eh, it's kind of corny. Yeah. Yeah. It's like one or two of them. All right. That, that gets me, but I don't know. I feel like we're just shitting all over this right now. Like what are some <laughs> positives? The positives. I love the concept of the movie just about, um, how if they play a video game and if you die in it, then you can die in real life. I, I like the whole idea of it. The cursed video game. Mm hmm. How about you? What are positives that you take away? Mm. <laughs> uh, the whole video game thing, for sure. But I don't know. I think that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's there like weren't weren't a whole lot. Yeah, I liked like, the comedic relief in the beginning with uh, what's his name? Finn. Finn. I said the concept of the movie was pretty cool and all that, but the execution of it just kind of, it was a little bit poor. I think the movie being PG-13 really hurt it. Yeah. But I mean, like we talked about, like maybe they needed that because this game, this was supposed, this movie was supposed to be marketed towards the young kids who were really into video games. Because at this time, 2006, at least, you know, traditionally, adults aren't supposed to be playing video games. It's, you know teenagers guys in their early 20s younger people yeah so that's who they thought their like audience was gonna be they didn't think you know us fucking creeping up on 30 we're gonna be watching this movie and fucking doing a deep dive on it like the mid-2000s is full of shit like this like can you guys think of movies nowadays that come out that are similar to this style like a lot of cgi like heavy CG and then like there's not a lot of blood or guts or anything. No. <clears throat> I feel like movies have really gone the way of practical effects. Especially in this James Wan era of horror with like the Conjuring universe, the Insidious movies. Yeah. Midsummer Hereditary. You yeah, say a lot of the movies that are hitting <clears throat> right now are more like they're a lot more atmosphere driven. They're a lot more well done. Yeah. 
Like, horror has gone very artsy. So these older movies in comparison are kind of, they seem very dated. <laughs> but no, so positives, I mean, I like I said, I liked the characters. I remembered all of their names for the most part. And I think that I like the actors more so than the characters. Like I said, the writing was definitely very questionable. I kind of mentioned it throughout the review, like what I thought of how there wasn't a lot of character development. Nobody's really any different at the end of the movie than when it started. That's the best way to judge, like, what the actual writing is like. I mean, Hutch overcomes his fear of fire. Not really. No. No. He was still cowering in the corner. Yeah. Abigail is still homeless. Swing stops wearing (laughs) his glove, though. There we go. Swink again, coming through with the save. Yeah. And he stops wearing his hat. And he stops wearing the hat. If you think about it, bro, he did get the most character development. I'm pretty sure he has the least lines in the whole fucking movie. Yeah. I'm trying to legit think of positives, bro, and it's really difficult. Uh, the story felt really loose. I didn't like the story. The plantation in the South... We didn't really learn anything about fucking Elizabeth. No. We didn't learn anything about the fucking game, who was making the game, how it worked. Why would this fucking woman who owned a plantation have a video game made about her? What if she had the game made about her? And then they found out the lore on how to kill her, but it wasn't actually the lore on how to kill her. It was just to set her free. And then that's why that's why at the end they show it going like mainstream. I like the theory. A little bit of thinking outside the bun. Yes. Where's your theory? <laughs> I ain't got no theory on this movie. <laughs> So what do you think happened to the group after they left? Do you think everything was just... I think they just went with their normal lives. <clears throat> that, I don't know. Like, so there's just so much about this movie that I, I don't know. Like that, that part where it, it just skipped from that scene to the movie store, or not the movie store, the game store, I'm just like... Yeah, I didn't like okay. that either. Lazy, like, right? I wanted to see, like, okay, like show me like at least a month later how they're all doing. And yeah, and then you know that's all I needed. Yeah, they could have gone about something like and then show the game. Yeah, like like he's saying, like showing a month later how they're doing, like everything's back to like kind of going back to normal and all that. But then, um, like like let's say Hutch goes into the video game store, and then all of a sudden he sees all these copies of Stay Alive and shit like that. He's like, let well, me see their reactions to that. Yeah. So we wanted an epilogue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is fair. Because like I said, I forgot that they fucking just did that jump cut. Like, we never see them again after they leave. It's just a weird spot to go in. Mm-hmm. Like, never... Because the cops were after them. Did the cops end up arresting them? You know? Right. How did that play out? Yeah. It's like they were like, oh, shit. We're a little over budget. Let's just stop right here. <laughs> <laughs> More or less, man. That's what happened, I feel like. Yeah. But so, guys, we're actually three and a half hours in right now. So let's go ahead and give our ratings. This should be fun. Scale of one to six, boys. I got ridiculed for doing a a half last time. So uh, I'll just stick with the one. You're going to go with the one? Yeah. I was going to give it a half. One and a half? No, just a half. (laughs) (laughs) 1.5. I'll actually give it a two. All right, all right, redo, redo. So whenever you say what you're giving it, just give like a brief example of why you're giving it that rating. <laughs> so you went with the one because, um, I don't know. Like you said, there was no character de- development. Um, it was definitely rushed at the end, and uh, I don't know. I just. Didn't really like it that much. Like, the concept was cool, but that that was about it. I give it a two because... 
while the movie, like I said, the movie was all right. I didn't hate it, and I didn't necessarily like it. It's not a movie I'd really recommend somebody either. Um, I do like the concept of it. I just don't like how it was executed. I don't like how they wrote it. I said I wasn't sure if it was because of the acting or if it was just how the story was written, but I just it lost my interest in so many times in the movie where I. I realized I wasn't paying attention, and then that's when I realized I had to focus onto the movie again. Um, something like that is just like I'm not gonna have too high of expectation for it, but they they definitely could have done a lot of different things to make the movie better. Kind of like how we said what they could have done at least for the ending. That ending, something like that, could have saved it just a little bit, but it still wouldn't have changed how they fucking wrote that whole movie. But Again, I didn't hate it like how I... I'm not going to give it the same rating as I gave Idle Hands. So far, Idle Hands, I was very disappointed with that movie. That's so how think, disappointed I was. So you think Idle Hands was worse than this movie? That Yeah, that's my opinion. Slap yourself. <laughs> with your Idle Hand, bro. No, sir. <laughs> that's, in that, like, so that's just how I felt from it. Have you seen Idle Hands? We did the podcast. Yes. <laughs> what Listen, bro. There's like five of you, dog. I get confused on who is what where. An asshole. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I sat across from you for three hours talking about this movie. Bro, that's why I brought that up. It's like, it's a one that we all rated together, and I don't know. Did you prefer it to Idle Hands, or did you like Idle I, Hands better? I preferred Idle Hands. Really? Just because. Well, the More thing com- is, like I said, really. for me, when I saw Idle Hands, it's like 30 minutes into the movie, I was like, when is this movie going to be over? That shit, like, felt forever. Compared to this one, I could still kind of focus back onto it, but... <laughs> I paused this movie 30 minutes in and uh, to use the bathroom, and I came back, I looked at how much there was left, and there was 47 minutes left. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> you know? Bro, when the movie started, whenever the guy's like, the power goes out and he's going to get a glass of milk, I had to play it back like five times because I kept like kind of nodding off during the motherfucker. (laughs) So. Had to keep myself from playing Cyberpunk. (laughs) (laughs) So check this out. I think, I think, I think I'm very, I'm dancing between your guys' two ratings. And I think I'm going to go with a two. Fuck yourself. <laughs> and literally, literally what that one fucking extra inch is for me is that this is a novelty movie. Meaning that no matter what, <clears throat> just like the concept of it is so strong that you would always tell somebody, Oh, you should watch this movie. It's about people that, you know, play a cursed video game. You die in the video game, you die in real life. It's a novelty thing. It, there's nothing else like it, really. So just for that in and of itself and the nostalgia, it gets a one from me. I mean, it gets a two. <laughs> it gets that one extra point. Yeah. Now, would I rewatch this movie? No. <laughs> Did I enjoy this movie? No. Was I pained to watch this movie? Yes. I do not like this movie. There's no redeeming qualities in it for me. We even, I even tried to stretch this podcast 20 minutes for us to figure out what the good things about this motherfucker are. And to be honest with you guys, we didn't make a good argument at all. <laughs> we failed miserably, okay? I think all our explanations was literally just, it was a good concept. It was a good concept, and we liked the actors, which has nothing to do with the actual fucking movie that they put down for us to watch. Mm-mm. I mean, just think about it, though. It's like, if you tell somebody, it's like, oh, yeah, kind of like what you're saying, give us a synopsis of the movie. It's like, oh, just check this movie out. It's about a game. It's a novelty movie. Yeah. Like, it's a one-off. Bro, I was, I was kind of disappointed, because when I did read what it was about and all that, I was like, oh, shit. Cool. Nope. And you know, this is kind of fun though, because I feel like of all all the movies we do for the most part, I enjoy them all. But I mean, this is gonna happen. There's hundreds of thousands of fucking movies out there, probably more than that. Not gonna like every single one of them, guys. Yeah. 
I think this is one of the few ones, though, where, like, we all universally dislike it. Like, for example, Idle Hands, we liked it. You didn't care for it. But this one, like, around the table, we didn't really fuck with this. Correct? Yep. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, guys, check out fucking uh, Stay Alive 2006. <clears throat> Good times. And if you watched it before this, before <laughs> watching this, I'm fucking sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But nah, so we're going to go ahead and get this one and come to a close, guys. Uh, Do you want to start plugging your fucking Twitch shit yet, or do you want to wait? It's however. Go for it. Well, I mean, if you guys want to go follow my Twitch, too, it's at uh, twitch.tv forward slash poncho underscore KC. My cheeks got big watching you do that. (laughs) I was like, yeah. Yeah. Josh, you got anything you want to plug? Nope. <laughs> Just this ass, baby. <laughs> <laughs> nah, guys, but so we're still figuring out the video stuff. The video stuff is going to come shortly. Hopefully tomorrow, because it seems like she got it to record, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So maybe I'll try to record the one tomorrow I'm doing with Raul and her. But again, go like the Facebook page. I need to do more with the Instagram, maybe play with the Twitter account. These episodes are going up on Spotify, Google, Apple. There's another one I forgot. Oh, YouTube. They're going to be on YouTube. So give them a check, like, subscribe, comment. Uh, This is the Death Taco Podcast.